to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Jillian Vickers from the Maui Pig Sanctuary. Welcome, Jillian. Hi. Aloha. Thank you for being on the show. So tell us about how you got involved in saving pigs. It started in 2020, right before the island kind of got shut down. It was Valentine's Day 2020, and I went to the feed store to get some supplies for the horses, and there were some piglets with a, a person in the parking lot, and I just commented on how cute they were, and she asked if I wanted them, and no hesitation whatsoever. I said, yes, I would love to have them, and I learned all about pigs how to raise them. I raised them in the house. I bottle fed them every two hours for three weeks and actually not bottle feeding, but a different type of feeding their, their food, but not in a bottle for pigs and uh, learned all about pigs and had them for, I don't know, maybe eight months before we start going. We went outside every day, but they moved kind of outside in the daytime and inside at night when they were about eight months old. And then, uh, I, st I started posting online about my pigs because it was the pandemic and we weren't supposed to work. So I didn't want to put anything about the fact that I was still working <laughs> going out there. So I just put the pigs out and I started to get known for having pigs and people asked for help with their pigs. And before you knew it, I fostered a couple more pigs and I was a foster fail. They're still here, Wilbur and Puppy. And then another pig that got hurt got brought to me and I still have her, Piggy Sue. She's part of this sanctuary now. And it just kind of escalated on Maui where I became known as the person that would help with pigs. And then I met a few other people that were interested in that. And that's how it began. And then what really started it off was a, a farmer was a pig farmer was going out of business and his daughter gave me a call and had a pet pig called Noodle and she wanted to know if we would take Noodle and he was going to sell off the rest of the pigs and leave the island and I said well you know let me come over and see Noodle and I got introduced to him as well as about 20 other pigs that were production pigs being raised for meat and I I met these girls and all their little babies and the situation they were living in and I looked into their eyes and just promised them I would make that better. And I left that day in a good relationship with the farmer saying, yes, I would take Noodle and one other pig. But personally, I couldn't just take the two pigs out of that situation. I knew these pigs were being raised for meat and I didn't want that to be their fate. So we put it out there to several people on Maui that, we would like to form a sanctuary and the company Mahi Pono stepped up and they offered us land fenced and cross fenced and water and everything we needed for the pigs. And we built a sanctuary down at Mahi Pono and we did a GoFundMe to get all the pigs from the farmer. And that began the Maui pig sanctuary. Wow. And so we got 20 female full-size farm pigs from that situation. And that, that's how it started. We still have all of them. They're all in great health. They are retired, not rescued. They're <laughs> retired out in a big, beautiful pasture with all the water they need and ponds and homes. And they live separate from the facility up at my place where we have another 20 pigs that have come in over the, the years, just a couple pigs here and there until we now have, I think we have 23 up here and we have 16 that live permanently at Mahi Pono and then the 38 fire pigs that we have also wow. are there. We've so, adopted out five of those so far and four more leave on Thursday uh -huh. that are the fire ones. But yeah, that's how it started. So and that was us, in 2021. Tell us about how the, the company that stepped up, what kind of, how did they have that land? What, does the company, I've never heard of the company, so. Wahi Pono is the largest land owner on the island of Maui, I believe now. They bought HCNS and the sugarcane, all the sugarcane land when that company went out of business. Ah. So you might want to check on that and you could 
I, and I got permission to use their name from the CEO before I brought this mm-hmm. up too. But I, I would um, do, do some research on Mahi Pono. They're a big ag company here on Maui. They're not Maui owned, I believe. It's, they're, they're a bit controversial. I believe they own all the water rights mm-hmm. and there's a water issue on the island of Maui, as we all know right now, after the fires. So they're, they're a big company. They believe they employ more people than anyone else on the island. Also, I, I could be wrong in that, but I'm pretty sure they are the largest employer here, as well as um, the lar- I think Ulapalakua maybe owns more land, Ulapalakua Ranch, but they would be a close second. Yeah. And they grow everything here. Yeah. Wow. So what what inspired them to step up for the pigs? Was there somebody in the company that was interested in pigs or um I would say that I know the CEO's daughter had once been in 4H mm-hmm. and when she found out that she was going to have to surrender her animal and sell it for meat that didn't sit well with her and so she dropped out of 4-H and was looking for something else to do. And she found horseback riding and I have a horseback riding school. Oh. And so I think she may have mentioned to her dad, Hey, we, we want to save the pigs. And she was <laughs> just a young girl at that time. So that is probably how that came about. Well, that's wonderful. However it yeah. came about, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking yeah. that she asked daddy to help. Uh-huh. And uh, it's been fantastic. They've been there for two years now. I, have nothing but wonderful things to say about that company and they've just stepped up for these pigs um they're possibly giving us another chunk of land a little closer to my place up country and they've they've just been really wonderful and the community has stepped up a lot and it's challenging to have a pig sanctuary on maui because we have a lot of feral pigs here and a lot of people that hunt so i'm the opposite end of the spectrum and i try to ride a very apolitical line on that and just help when we can help and not make anybody wrong and just do what we need to do to save as many as we can. So, I mean, I heard something about, cause I had a, somebody I knew at work that had a pig, which ran away from a slaughter farm. And then she just raised the pig from when the pig was tiny, tiny, the pig's like a thousand pounds now. But uh, she, she said that there's no laws protecting pigs that if, You know, if the pig was in your property and someone shot it, it would be okay for them to shoot it, even if it's on your property. Is that true? I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. I will be willing to say that there is limited laws protecting pigs, but I don't think anybody could come onto your property and shoot one of your animals. I would think that that would just be be common sense in the law, but I haven't researched that, so I can't give an honest, a truthful answer because I just don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. They they don't have a great reputation in the community, although they're the smartest, gentlest, most compassionate, loving animals I've ever met. I didn't know that in 2020 until raising them. But they are incredible, absolutely incredible animals. And it's just a crime the way that they are treated yeah. in, in our society with factory farming and everything. And I'm not going to get into that someday. Right now, our goal is just to educate people on how wonderful they are and how to take care of them as friends, not food. And for our sanctuary, our mission is to, it wasn't originally, but as we got into it, we realized there's a big lack of vet care available for the pigs. Absolutely. Yeah. Modern vet care. They, Mm -hmm. They don't understand how to treat them as dogs and cats are treated. And so we, for instance, we can't get the large pigs, female pigs spayed on Maui. There's no, no one that will do that. No vets that will do that at this time. They're too big. They don't have the facility for it. Pigs tend to have a hard time with anesthesia. So we don't have any veterinarians here that will perform that operation, which is very important for their longevity yeah. uh, is to spay the female pigs. So we've got a couple of vets who will do it under a hundred pounds and all of our females that we got that were under a hundred pounds are spayed or the babies that we have will be spayed. 
and then everything we have is neutered. So, yeah, but it's so our goal now is to create a, a pig vet care clinic here on Maui to help people out with their pigs. And the vets we use are are good vets. They just don't have the experience or the facility to do the, oper the operations to bring it up to the top level of animal care. So the people who have pigs on Maui that you're hel they helping, they are just pet pigs that the people have? Most of the pigs that I'm referring to are feral pigs that were caught as babies mm -hmm. um, or slaughter pigs that are now pets. I've got one pig, and I believe there's a picture of her there that is we found on the side of the road on March 22nd, and she gave birth on May 15th, and she is a smaller Kuni Kuni potbelly cross, and she would be more considered a pet um, by these arbitrary standards that are out there, dividing pigs into pets as slaughter pigs or pet pigs, and that we hope to move that, change that standard as well, and we're setting a precedent with this flight on Thursday, I must say. And Tell us about the flight on Thursday. Where are they? The flight days? on Thursday is is pretty special. It's as you know, we we rescued 38 pigs from Lahaina after the fires. And we were called by hundreds of people to help those pigs out. Their whole area was burned and and uh, the the ground was horrible. Their owners lost their home and their jobs and their cars and were not able to continue taking care of them. So we and the Humane Society was not able to help with that, nor did they contribute any funding for it. Um, we just, we were kind of like the people that would do it. And there was so much going on over here at that time with people that lost their homes and just so much. I know you're probably aware of what was going on in the fire here with the lack of communication between different sections of the island. And we were without power for five days. It was absolutely the worst thing I've ever lived through. And I'm 60 years old. Um, and we had both of our sanctuaries were under evacuation notice. So we, we couldn't even get to Lahaina until the 14th, I believe, is the first time we went over. And we couldn't get the pigs out until August 22nd, and the fire was on the 8th. And we got them out on the 22nd and the 26th. And we got them to beautiful homes on this side of the island where they could stay in quarantine for 60 days and get all their vet work done and breathe clean air and drink clean water and just decompress after what they went through. Because they, their farm, they survived because they went in the large pond under the water, the fire went over the top of them. And these pigs were like the only survivors in that whole area. So it was crazy. That's why there were so many people calling us going, help those poor pigs. So uh, it's piglets. Were they were, pigs? What, like, were they they were, they were raised for production by a, a very, very nice Samoan man and his wife who were raising them as part of their culture. And when they realized after this fire that they just couldn't take care of them. And in order for us to step in, we had to have the pigs signed over um, as friends, not food to the sanctuary for a lifetime that they would live for a lifetime now. And they agreed to that and are just absolutely fantastic working with us. I speak with them at least once a week. And they've even offered a portion of their land when it gets restored um, as a sanctuary section for the pigs. So it, it's nice to see that whole mindset change over mm -hmm. during this disaster. So mm -hmm. anyway, four of the piglets that were born in that fire, they were born on the 10th, will be flying to California, uh, two boys and two girls to two different sanctuaries. When Pigs Fly is in... Um, Guerneville, California, up in Sonoma County. And the Rancho Compasión is in Nicasio Valley, California, which I believe is also in Sonoma County. It's very close, but it's not near Petaluma in that area by the San Francisco Bay Area above it. And uh, 
they will fly out on Thursday. They're the first pigs of this nature to get official documentation to be able to fly over as friends, not food, and go to sanctuaries. So we we are breaking ground on that, and we continue to want to continue to do that. And we're hoping with the sponsors of these pigs from Rancho Compassion and their their sponsor Miyoko's. We hope that they will just absolutely adore their piglets and help us find homes for the rest of them. There is a lot of pig sanctuaries in California. And if they each took two, this would be unbelievable. But it's a rather pricey endeavor. It's a couple thousand per pig to send them over. So, them? Wow, that's that's like a human plane ticket, I guess. But Yeah, well, with that is about a thousand for the plane ticket within all of the vet work and oh. documents that it requires and working with the Department of Agriculture and the USDA and the vets here and the vets in California and two different flights. Um, I've learned a lot. We are on a big learning curve. So that that's happening for them. And we're really excited. And then tomorrow um, we got our nonprofit um, license two weeks before the fire. We had been op- just operating and I, I basically pay for everything from my pocket but at the whole time setting up a nonprofit and getting a phenomenal board of directors and that which we have and we got that all approved on july 13th and then that fire hit and so we are just learning how to fundraise and i was about to say tomorrow is giving tuesday which is the biggest fundraising day of the year for nonprofits. so we're learning how to do that and that's a, a big deal for us here on Maui, and we are the only sanctuary, I believe, in the state that is solely pigs. There are other farmed animal sanctuaries that also do chickens and cattle and sheep and goats, but we concentrate on pigs. So I, I'm, I don't quote me on that, but I don't know. No, I'm other. pretty sure you are. I know the yeah. other animal sanctuaries. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I know there's Aloha and over on Oahu. Yes, yes. There's the Le- yeah. Leilani, Big Island. Yeah, yeah Leilani's over here. And she's, magical creatures, yeah. Yeah, magical creatures. We have some people from magical creatures over here that used to work there that are oh, nice, uh, nice. helping us out. And then Leilani, she's, she changed the laws for pigs. Oh, she did. She she's did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did absolutely wonderful um, where pigs can no longer be barged. Mm-hmm. out of the state they can only stay within the state slaughter pigs that is so it's yeah. a step it's a step so. yeah. yeah um let's go through your pictures because you have such lovely pictures in the videos okay um so if you would run them michael uh this one is tell me okay from, that uh, is me and cupid and valentine when they were about four months old i believe so that would be maybe even three months old, March, maybe June of 2020. Mm-hmm. And then they're just sitting in my lap. Yeah. So how about this that one? That is Valentine now. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he's about 800 pounds. Oh, my he, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't come in the house anymore. <laughs> the house is upstairs. He, he would crash through the floor. Um, oh but that's Valentine. And he's just a love. He's one of the leading leader pigs of the group. They are herd animals. Uh-huh. That's Cupid. And that was Cupid. He was playing Wilbur in a a Charlotte's Web skit we were doing with the kids oh. at a house party at the barn. A big part of our program is our kids teaching program. We teach compassion and education about pigs and how Hi. friendly they are. And that's one of the children with, that's one of the babies that were was born on May fifteenth this year, a little Kuni Kumi baby. I think it's um, syrup. That would be syrup. Yeah. And the little girl is Amanda. She's nine years. Amelia. And she's nine years old. Yeah. And these are the pigs playing. Yeah. This is the little guys, and they're. This is when they were about a month old, and they're just out running and playing and zooming, and that's their mother Maple, <laughs> and the babies are. Maple sugar, maple syrup, maple candy, <laughs> maple leaf, and Canuck. 
is the little boy. <laughs> and then Mama is Maple. And they're all spayed and neutered now. And that's something we're re real proud of. And that's Mama Maple. Oh. She's cute. Begging for food. She wants a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Sugar, her little girl. And this is Charlotte. Charlotte is the first pig that came with Noodle out of the um, pigs that were raised for food farm. And she came over here and she was pregnant when she came. So she gave birth to her babies and she has three babies. They're here. They're two years old now. She had them on August 31st, 2021. And she's just one of the prettiest pigs in the world. And that's her making a face right there. That was Halloween. We were having a party and she was begging for some candy. So you can see the little face she's making with her lips. And she's just a beautiful pig. She's probably, she's standing up on her hind legs there looking through a window. But she's probably about seven, six or seven hundred pounds. Wow. Yeah. So we think how the pig survived. Uh, the, the pond was full of water. So we think as it started to get hot and the flames came, they all went to the center of the water and squatted down as far as they could. And the fire just went right over them. Wow, pigs are so amazing. So smart. Uh, that water she's referring to is right over there. And it's just become contaminated now. And we've got to find them a place to be. Hi, beauties. Yeah, Laura was saying at the beginning about how they hid under the water and save their own lives by going under the water in order to not get burned. They had spots on their back that were probably from embers oh. falling on them is what we could figure out, burn spots. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was in a, like a sprinkle pattern. Not all of them had it, some of them did. It's very odd. Mm -hmm. Huh. Oh, so smart. She's got her new blankie. <laughs> Mud pie has a blankie. We love it. Oh, this is when they arrive. Good mud pie. Oh, I'm going to cry. Oh, baby. Oh. She says, this is our nest, you guys. This is our den. Oh. Yeah. Good mama. This that was their, their soft landing right there. Is there is one other baby of hers that is at the Humane Society that I will go and get. I'd love her to stay together. I guess I'll just keep an eye and just make sure they're all drinking. I'm sure they're stressed. I see she's only got maybe three or four of those, like, super lactating. So yeah. They're probably just so stressed out. Yeah, so that was their arrival. And they, um, two of those babies, one that was at the Humane Society, one of the little black ones are flying to Rancho Compassion to nice, speak. Nice. Yeah. This is the other soft landing. This is Tunda. He's the biggest boar that was there at the fire. He's probably about five or 600 pounds, 550. Big boy. And uh, he's now neutered. And this was where he landed compared to the, the completely decimated fire area. He just went right into that pond and sat for a good hour just chilling out. He had the hardest time, this boy, um, coming back from the fire. He was really stressed. I think it's because he's the leader of the herd, I'm guessing. But he's had a really hard time with it. He's he's very healthy now. He's neutered. He's still with his herd. But his recovery from that was very challenging. And that is his son. I believe that's Junebug, or Junior, with his pineapple. <laughs> They love pineapples, and we're we're really like lucky. The whole thing, like the even yeah, the, the, absolutely. Uh, oh my they god! They will carry the tops around. They will carry the tops around, and we're we're really lucky. We get a lot of great donations from down to earth and Mana Foods, and all the a lot a lot of people. Mahi Pono donates fresh produce for the pigs, so we're really lucky. We get very well taken care of. This. this is some more. This is another video. Here's the biggies. Hi, biggies. Where they landed. Hi, guys. They're just in the water up on the hill here. He's a lazy boy. Got this nice long hose. I'm going to make him a big puddle. This is just our, 
our mini pool here. And they've got buckets of troughs of water over on the other side. And they're just out and about enjoying the fresh air and that just breathe. Their now first not day arriving. Fire zone. They got their freedom here. You guys got your freedom day. Welcome to life, guys. Who's that coming over? Talkative soul. Hello. Hello, I see you through the bushes. Oh, here comes Salmon. I think we're all going to get together over here. Hey, finding each other. Let's go to the website, Michael. The website's beautiful. Um, and can you go to where they show the different pigs as well? We don't have all the pigs loaded on the website yet because we have been so busy with the fire, doubling our capacity for pigs. Yeah, it right. was challenging. But that's Mr. But that's Trific standing up right there. Mm -hmm. Can't see. I can't read it, so I can't tell if it says her name. Or not and Christopher Hogwood. I think it does. Terrific Hogwood, Christopher yeah, Hogwood. It does. It does yeah, Christopher is my son there. <laughs> he, was, he was raised in the house and he has his own story that will become a novel at nice. some point. Beautiful pig. Yeah. Yeah. If there's one thing you'd like to, um, you know, if people want to help out or if there's anything that they could do, you know, obviously donate. Is there like a button where they can donate on the website? There is a button on the website. And tomorrow, like I said, is Giving Tuesday. I don't know when this will air, but um, we constantly will be running some sort of a fundraiser through our Facebook and Instagram. I believe tomorrow they'll set up a GoFundMe. Um, it, it's oh. out of my area of expertise, but we've got one of the board of directors doing that. And they uh, are doing something called Patreon, where those are monthly donors. And you can also sponsor a pig or come out and volunteer and meet all the pigs and enjoy the, the just cuddling them and socializing them and making them ready to go to their forever homes, mm -hmm. learning about them. Yeah, you can... There's all sorts of ways to help. Right now, financial is very useful because we did take on so many extras and we're doing the When Pigs Fly campaign. So that's always helpful. And we, we hope to turn this into an absolutely fantastic sanctuary in perpetuity where it'll be here forever on Maui. And that's what we're working on is putting all the uh, pieces in place for that. And... It's just going really well. The past couple of years have been amazing. How many people have stepped up to this? It's just, ah, it's, it's wonderful. It's crazy for me because my lifetime has been com something completely different. And to step into nonprofit and mm -hmm. for pigs is a brand new adventure that I'm thoroughly embracing and just loving. <laughs> and yeah, I can, I mean, go ahead. Wonderful. No, no, go ahead. Um, no. So, you know, we're out of time. I wish we had more time to talk to you, but maybe we'll have you back on the show. Uh, we, we have to wrap it up now. I'm Dr. Okay. Um, This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking with Jillian Vickers from the Maui Pig Sanctuary. Thanks to Michael, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you in 2024 for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My guests will be Cindy Teixeira from Hawaii Animal Kuleana Alliance. If you have any ideas for the show or questions from my future guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. 
Check out my website at gracefulhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my guests, um, my future guests, and future projects. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you.